You've got a slowing China, slowing Europe, and rates normalization potentially happening in the United States. So should investors duck for cover in Southeast Asia? Let's find out more from Song Seng Wen, uh, CINB GK Research. Very nice to see you. My pleasure. Good to be here. Yeah, Happy New Year belatedly. <laughs> Fingers crossed you'll be a happy New Year and a leaping goat instead of a limping yeah, horse. Yeah, just grazing right along. Goodbye, <laughs> leaping horse. <laughs> leaping goat. We'll see. Yeah, yeah, so you're calling overweight huh? position on financials uh, and yeah. property. Property? Seriously? Well, prop okay. Okay, property first, probably more a case of just because people had expected prices to tank. Well, it has, it has come off a bit. So we think if property price decline, a private property price decline within the expected range of 10 to 15 percent, I think that's pricing uh, into the current um, share price uh, mm. of the big developer or, already. So it's basically a case of just they're trading below or, you know, uh, yeah, but, but AV, isn't, this, isn't yeah. the story really over, over about oversupply in both True. residential True. and private housing? Which in is both, why yeah. we say you stay away from the physical property unless you are, you know, if you are looking to sell, get out now. Uh, if you're not in a hurry to sell, that's fine. You'll come back because Singapore is only that big and population is growing. Prop where can property prices go? Current cycle obviously down uh, itself. So we say physical property, not so good. But as far as the developer is concerned, I think their prices now reflects oh. probably the, the, the worst case scenario. We hope worst case means 10 to 15% price decline itself. Anything more, okay, we have to reject our numbers uh, itself as well. So it's more of a case of valuation story uh, itself. I see. It's really all about the price. Than, yeah. And your next bit probably interests Chris more, which is that net banks, net interest margins will get higher yeah. because higher rates stateside. And then you're saying REITs therefore are out and telcos too expensive, right? Well, uh, yeah, I mean, at this juncture, it's, uh, we haven't seen the rates increase just yet, although currently temporary because of the volatility and uncertainty over Greece, flows of safe haven money. You have seen a switch away from the single dollar assets uh, side to the USD dollar asset side. We caused that little spike uh, in the swap offer rates, pulling up uh, the, inter the, the cyber rates that have been charged by the three banks itself. We think this is temporary, assuming that they mm. sort out of the, the mess in, in Greece itself. So if that happened, then it will trail down. Then really much that now depends on when uh, the U.S. normalization of the interest rate begins. So our assumption really is we still believe second half of next year, uh, this, this, next, year. this year, this year, people getting <laughs> From the yeah, horse to the goat now. It's <laughs> a lot of people yeah. saying it will be next year, right, to be honest. It might be next year. So that's a, I, I'm also watching that one. There's a risk of that being pushed back. But certainly if we take the consensus view that it going to be sometime this year, then, you know, just positioning early. But that seems to be the consensus call uh, mm. currently as well. Well, when you talk to clients um, about your overweight mm. position yeah. in banks and, and, you know, obviously that's a natural reflection of the Singapore economy and yeah, everything yeah, that's yeah. going on here as well, property as well, very similar. Indeed, indeed. Your China obviously is, is, is a major impact on what's as happening in Singapore. The region, yeah. It's the you know, biggest mm. trading partner. Is, yeah, is, yeah, you know, yeah, Singapore, yeah. from where we stand, is still seen very much as a, a derivative of indeed, the Chinese market. Indeed, indeed. So obviously that has to play into your view. Now, indeed, if I look indeed. at China at the mm. moment, I'm seeing cement prices production falling away. It's actually contracting. Uh, you can look at private mm. sector numbers like Macau, Baccarat numbers, they're falling. Some yep. of the private sector surveys are not particularly inspiring. Indeed. I don't mm. see an all-out crash, I don't see below 6% anytime yep, yep. soon. But what's your house view, what's your personal view on, on China and, and how does that play into your overweight okay. view there? Keeping our fingers crossed, I think as far as Ch the Chinese side is concerned, they're watching two fronts obviously. What is the strength of the external demand that may lift some of the export oriented you know, uh, businesses side. Um, and then obviously the extent of the slowdown that they're calibrating on the domestic economy side. We think this kind of targeted approach that we're seeing now, okay, soft landing, six plus percent. I think we don't really matter too much with the headline numbers. Mm. More about job creation within the broader economy itself. Are still are we still seeing uh, services job creation? I think is fairly strong at the moment, just under 11 million, and in total for the whole, whole country. So if that can continue to pan through, then I think that still supports certain level of consumption itself. Overall economy stable may not be the quite the strong growth that we have seen before, but doing enough to give us all a little bit of a helping hand. So mm. yes, it is an important assumption that China stays on that stable yeah. growth path so, itself. So China hums along, but just very quickly, the banks, mm. you, you have an overweight position. Net yeah. interest margins get higher, but hey, will people continue to take
take out mortgage loans if the rates shoot through the roof? Well, I suppose at this juncture around the region, no, I'm not flying through the door in that sense of <laughs> lending growth, but sufficient if you look at, let's say, Malaysia's GDP growth. So mm. price on the upside, right. enough on the ground, spending private investment. So infrastructure spending side appears to be driving sufficiently oh. enough of a business side. Itself. So there is enough, I think, to keep going on the loan side. Leveraging, I think, is being sort of a deliberate being, being, being brought down because of the fear of rising interest rate itself. But I think the balance is sufficient to give enough business to banks like us. Mm. Are you, is your view being bought by your sort of international client base? Take away your Singapore base, who are obviously very you know, devoted towards the, the Singapore stocks. Could you sell your view to some of your more international investors, and what would they about, do with about Singapore? Yeah, I think no, the, problem, about Singapore, your about the problem there. with Singapore, which is why the market trading activity has been so low, is that all these stories and themes are very similar across all the brokers as well. Probably oh. overbroke. Singapore market is just overbroke with these key themes itself. Mm. So we're trying to find new ideas, which again very very difficult at this juncture so it's not a very sexy market that's why singapore is concerned <laughs> you own the banks okay we're happy with the, with with the developer okay i buy your idea maybe telco may squeeze a little bit more if they charge a bit more higher but outside of that where else can you find plantation stocks in terms of the big capex um you know uh, industrial companies not so good uh, yeah. as well so it's okay let's find fun somewhere else uh, instead so in that sense singapore has been marginalized just when the flow of monies are just not that attracted to singapore yeah maybe we'll see a little bit of a pickup now that uh, we've uh, grazed into the new year of the go well very nice to we see you so. today thank you and much appreciated song sing one of cimbgk research